only can you say that I called on him, but he heard my cry. Amen. Stand with me for the reading of the word. From the Old Testament, Psalm 34. From the Old Testament, Psalm 34 and verse 4. Hear now these words. I sought the Lord, and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. I'm going to talk to you about my fears. My fears. What are some of the things that scare you in life? What are your fears? And are your fears holding you back. The question this morning is how do we get beyond the things that scare us? One of my friends mentioned recently, he says, man, I, as I get older, he says, I have a fear of aging. Uh, he is fearful about his usefulness even at his own job. He said to me, he says, Kevin, I'm 60 years old, I'm, I'm employed, but he says, I see a younger workforce every day. And he says, these cats are technologically savvy. And he said, I'm still old school. And he said, he was honest, he said, and I'm fearful. I'm fearful of how I can make it another five years. Fearful. Robert, young man, finished at the University of Toledo Law School. And the first time that he took the Ohio bar exam, he did not pass. In fact, we saw him a couple of months ago, and he said, Pastor, I'm fearful. It was a hard test. And I just hope that all of the years of, of undergraduate and being in law school that I hadn't wasted mom and daddy's money. He said, I'm fearful that I can pass the bar exam. Sharon, who graduated from Tulane Medical School with the focus of being an anesthesiologist, completed her residency, and there she was to take the Louisiana State Board to be an anesthesiologist. Failed her test. She took it a year later, failed it again. And she said, well, maybe I don't, maybe I, I'm not cut out to be an anesthesiologist. I said, Sharon, you just scared. The devil has got you scared. And sometimes if we're honest with ourselves, we have to come to grips with our fear. A member called and said that she had been diagnosed with cancer. And she's fearful that she can survive. This is not the first time that she's been diagnosed with breast cancer. In fact, it's the third. And she said, I'm fearful of how I will make it. She says, Pastor, I'm raising my, my grandchildren and their mother is in jail. How will they make it? You know, sometimes you just need to talk to the Lord about your fear. 
I know we live in a culture that teaches you to be superman and superwoman and to act like you got it all together. But sometimes, and maybe I'm talking to some folk like myself that says, God, I got some fear. So do we even acknowledge our fear? My good friend, Eddie, a year ago, known Eddie for a long time, Eddie, excellent mechanic, used to fix my father's cars, and then he moved to Detroit, opened a garage for himself, and he realized that if he's going to run an auto shop, that maybe he ought to get some training in business, went back to school, got a business degree. Then he got hired on in management at Sears Automotive. Last year, he said to me, he said, man, Sears is drawn down. He said, I'm 58 years old. He says, will I be able to find another job that pays me what I make now? He says, Kevin, I'm fearful that here I am with two kids in college, and now my whole district is being shattered. He says, I'm fearful that my life is turning upside down at 58 years old. So I asked you this morning, what scares you? What are the things that, 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 that you're scared of, that you're fearful of? And the real question is, how do you deal with your fear? Well, the psalmist has an answer for it. First of all, he said, I sought the Lord. I prayed to the Lord. I was honest about the things that I'm scared of. I prayed to the Lord. And then he said, and God heard me. Now, there's a whole lot of misunderstanding about this text. Because just because the Lord hears you does not mean that the Lord always moves the mountain. Yeah, some folks say, oh, the Lord hears my prayer. That's wonderful. But it doesn't mean that he automatically cures your ailments. It doesn't mean that he automatically turns the wayward child around. In fact, when you read the text, the Lord did not solve his problem. He doesn't even suggest that. But what the Lord does do is that the Lord will take the fear that you have away about the problem. He may not move the problem. He may not give you what you want. But God will say, I will give you a peace in the midst of the storm that the fear about the problem will lessen. Thursday, Eddie and I were Facebooking each other. And I asked him, how's it going? And he said, man, you never guess what the Lord has done. I said, tell me, we can shout on Facebook. <laughs> he said, just when Sears was downsizing, and, and they told me that I had less than 90 days. He said, I was scared. I, I was fearful. How will a man 58 years old make it in today's society? He said, let me tell you something. I got a call from Pep Boys and got a management job. Yeah. He said, but let, let, let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you, it doesn't pay what Sears paid me. But the Lord is still making a way out of no way. The psalmist said, I cried unto the Lord and he heard me and he took away my fear. Sometimes we must understand that it's not the problem. 
It's how we perceive the problem. Maybe there's someone in church today that you, you kind of have a Mahalia Jackson testimony that you say, my soul looks back and wonder how I made it over. I cried unto the Lord, and he answered me. How did he answer you? Did he take away the problem? No. It says, and he delivered me from my fears about the problem. He delivered me from my fears about the problem. Is anybody here that you had your back up against the wall? You didn't know how you are going to make it. You didn't know how you were going to survive. And it seems like the Lord didn't move the mountain. Maybe the Lord was teaching you in the midst of that, that I'm God all by myself, that I can bless you even when you're surrounded by folk who don't care for you. Some of you, if you'll be honest, yeah, you may have worked 20, 30, 40 years, but they weren't smiling at you every day you came into the office. And the Lord has just put a fence all around you. He didn't move the boss that didn't like you. He didn't move the co-worker that was stabbing you in the back. But he just made a way for you in the midst of the storm. He delivered you from your fear. You know, I found out to be delivered from my fear of the problem is better than being delivered from the problem. It's because when I can see God at work in the midst of trials, in the midst of struggle, if I can see God at work even when your money gets funny and he still makes a way out of no way, he delivered me from my fear. Solomon said, I sought the Lord. And he answered me. Sometimes God's answers does not feel like an answer. Sometimes you can say, now, Lord, I ain't trying to climb this mountain. Just move it, if, if you will. Yes, 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 yes. And he doesn't move. Mm. But he has you out at Planet Fitness spiritually every morning. So he can give you some spiritual muscle to climb the mountain. And you, you climb in the mountain, you say, but now, Lord, that's not what I asked you. I asked that you would just move the mountain. And the next thing you know, if you're not careful, you're on the top of the mountain looking around. Because the Lord says, I'm going to take the fear away. When I take the fear away, you can deal with it. Not long ago, my former secretary of Third Baptist, Pat Page, now Pat Jones. And I never will forget, Pat said to me one day, Pastor, husband had died. And she said, I'll probably never get married again. I said, really? I said, what's wrong with you, Pat? <laughs> she started laughing. And she said, I probably will never get married again. I said, so you just believe that at 68 years old, you'll never get married again, and so you're just going to throw in the towel right now. And she said something. She said, and who will want me? The devil will make you fearful. And little did she know that I had a deacon, Gilbert Jones, that had been looking cross-eyed at her. We all kind of suspected it, but we, we didn't know for a fact. And next thing I know, Deacon Jones, he used to stutter a little bit, came to my office, said, no, 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 Reverend, I, I, I got a little something for your secretary. I said, she didn't upset you? She said, oh, no, 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 never let it be said, Pastor. He said, I, I, 
I want to propose to her. I got tickled. I said, well, Pat's in the office. I said, y'all can come in my office, and you can propose right here, and next Sunday I'll have my robe ready. <laughs> Pat will tell you she's 81 years old now. They just got back from a cruise in the Caribbean. I said, and you didn't even bother the past to call me. God will deal with your fears. But you must call on the Lord. And you must be honest. Lord, I'm scared. Lord, hear all my fears. And he said, I may not move the mountain for you. But I'll give you strength to climb. Are you in church today and if you're honest with yourself? Pastor, I got some fear. Maybe your fears are your children. Maybe your fear is that even your worst fear can come true. Maybe you've gotten some bad news medically. And your fear is that you don't know how God will walk with you through this. Maybe you're like my friend Eddie. You've been working at a company for many years, and all of a sudden they're downsizing. And you're saying, and how will I make ends meet at 58 years old? How will I be able to survive? Maybe your fear is that I'm lonely, I'm by myself, and will I ever be happy? Maybe your fear is your health is declining. Whatever your fears are, the psalmist says, I sought the Lord. And the first place is to call on the name of the Lord. One of the things that I find on Sunday is that we put on a real good show. Everybody want to tell me, how you doing? Oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. That don't mean you ain't scared of something. Oh, I'm on top of the world. I'm a child of the king. I get it. But at some point, you better be honest with God. At some point, you better say, Lord, as my grandmother used to say, as she went to bed, call on the name of the Lord and tell him what you want. Cry, and he, Thomas said, I sought the Lord. And he answered me. When you read this in the Hebrew, it actually said, and he heard me. The Lord heard my prayer. I didn't mean that he put $10,000 in my checking account the next day. Didn't mean that all of my enemies went away. Didn't mean that all of my problems in life were done. Didn't mean that my health got better overnight. He heard me. Now, some of us have been, we've been grown up to believe that when the Lord hears you, then that means that he solved all your problems. How many of y'all here know that's not true? But what the Lord does when he heals, hears you, he'll say, I, I'm going to walk right along with you. And just when you thought you couldn't make it, my grace and my mercy will pick you up. Is there anybody here didn't know how you was going to make it, but the Lord pulled up side of you and the Lord made a way. Is there anybody here in your blue t-shirt can say the Lord is good. His mercy endures forever. Hey! He heard me. Yes. And he took away my fear. You know, the longer you live, some things just don't scare you anymore. Some things just don't hit you the way they used to. If you've been walking long enough with the Lord and, and you've seen him open doors that no man can shut, don't you know when somebody tries to shut a door, it doesn't hit you the way it used to hit you. 
because you've lived long enough and you, you can say, my God is able. He'll take away the fear. May not cure every illness. May not turn around every child when you want him to. He may not solve every financial dilemma when you want him to. He may not fix every issue the way you want him to. But is anybody sitting in church today that can say, Pastor, when I look back over my journey, I myself have to wonder how I made it over. Is there anybody here that in church today that you had to say, devil, you just got to get behind me. You, you, you can try to scare me in and put on the Halloween mask all you want, but I've been walking with the Lord. I've been walking with Jesus long enough, and I know I'm his child. I sought him. He answered me. And he took the fear. He took the fear. Some of you here today, you might say, Pastor, you don't know my story. You don't know what I'm dealing with. You don't know what I'm up against. But my prayer for you is that you seek the Lord. And you keep seeking the Lord until he answers you. And understand that the Lord may not answer you the way you want him to answer. Because we can be very specific. Like the man who said, now, Lord, I want you to get me a new car. Lord, I want it to be a Cadillac Broham, burgundy, leather interior is what I want. And the Lord sent him a Chevy and Impala, <laughs> all upset. Lord, I gave you transportation. I made a way for you to get back and forth. Sometimes you have to say, Lord, I'm just going to wait for your answer. Some of you are under financial stress and you, you're praying all the time. Lord, take this bill off me. Take that bill. And the next month, doggone it, the same bill keeps coming. And you're angry with God. And God is trying to say, but wait a minute. In the midst of whatever financial stress you're under, Am I not putting food on your table? Hallelujah. Am I not making a way out of no way? Am I not providing for you? Am I not blessing you? Maybe I need to have a God that can bless in the midst of the storm. Not just take me out of the storm. I sought the Lord. I sought the Lord. He heard me. He answered me, and he delivered me. Did he deliver me from all my problems? No. But he delivered me about the fear that I had about the problem. He let me know that whatever's going on, that he's still a sovereign God. He's let me know that he can take care of me, regardless of how life's circumstances can go up and down. That's the good news of the message today. I sought the Lord. Will you seek the Lord? He answered me. Will you wait for the answer? And then will you rejoice? Even if he doesn't move your mountain. But the answer could be, I'm going to give you strength to climb the mountain. No, they don't like yet work. But guess what? They can't do nothing with you. They may not care for you, but guess what? If God is for you, he's more than the world against you. Are there any witnesses in this house today? Are there any witnesses in the house today? I say, Pastor, maybe my prayer it's not that he take every problem away from my life.
But maybe my prayer, maybe my prayer is that he deliver me from the fear, from the fear. Can I survive with my illness? Lord, help me to see your grace and your mercy in the midst of my illness, in the midst of my challenge, in the midst of my problem. Give me a peace that will pass all understanding. I know we're up here on the hill looking good, nice and pretty today. I get it. But are you in tune with what you're scared of? The fear that's in your life? And are you willing to say, I need to seek the Lord? I need to wait on his answer. And Lord, even if you don't take these things away, I pray that you deliver me from the fear of how I look at my problems. Because when the fear is gone, then the hope comes. And you can stand like our foreparents, you say, I don't know when and I don't know how. But I know the Lord will make a way somehow. Let's stand and give him some praise. The doors of our church open for you right now. You can come as a candidate for baptism. You can come based on Christian experience. If you're here today. softly we also extend a time for prayer maybe you're here today and you say pastor there's some things in my life I am fearful about and I want to start at the altar today seeking God's face I want to start today Feel free to come on down and we'll pray for you. We'll pray with you. That not only will I seek his face, but I want to hear his voice. And Lord, you may not take away my problems and my issues. But Lord, I pray that you will deal with my fear. My fear. Even, Lord, if, if my worst fear is a reality, that you will deal with my fear. This altar is open for you right now. Don't leave church the way you came. The psalmist said, I, I sought the Lord prayed about. I acknowledge the things in this life that scared me. I didn't let him just eat away at my soul. But I acknowledge him. I, I got right with God. I said, God, these are things that I, I'm scared about. Maybe it's your health. Maybe it's a family member. Maybe it's errors in your own life. Seek the Lord. And he'll answer. And be open to the answer. Be open to the answer. And watch the Lord. Feel that void in your life. Fear. This altar is open. Those who've come down, please stand. Let's come on around. speaks to your heart. I sought the Lord. I sought the Lord. I was fearful as to how I was going to even make it. Eddie would tell you, I sought the Lord, Pastor. 
58 years old, being downsized. I saw the Lord. Robert will tell you that. I'm just going to seek the Lord. I, I didn't just, God didn't just send him to law school for nothing. The devil will try to make you fear. Seek the Lord. Sharon will tell you that. The Lord didn't bless her to get into Tulane and finish medical school for nothing. Seek the Lord. If you're not careful, the devil will fill your heart with fear and immobilize you. We will always have problems. God, help me to stare him in the face and say, devil, you just got to get behind me. Because great is he that is within me than he that's in this world. That's when God takes away fear. And even though you have to climb the mountain, he gives you strength to climb the mountain. I want to make one more appeal as the Lord is speaking to my heart right now. Somebody here wants to, needs to come to this altar. I don't know who you are, but I feel it in my soul right now. Whatever you're fearful of, whatever you're wondering, God, have you left me? Have you abandoned me? You didn't move the mountain, God. Maybe God is telling you, baby, it's not about whether I moved the mountain. Is that I give you strength to climb the mountain. And that I'm so close to you until the mountains of life don't even scare you no more. Because you know that God is able to see you through. If you're in church today, don't pass up the opportunity. I feel the anointing of the Lord in this place. Every head is bowed. Every eye is closed. Take somebody by the hand. If you will take someone by the hand. Read this word. God is able. He can fix it. Whatever you're dealing with. I feel it in my soul. I sought the Lord. And he said, and the Lord answered me. And he said, he took away the fear. Let us pray. Lord, I thank you in the name of Jesus. Somebody here today, Father, life has been tough. Life has made them scared. But Lord, we call upon you right now in the name of Jesus, whatever it might be, their health, their family, their peace, their state of mind, whatever it might be. The psalmist said, I called upon you, Lord, and, and you answered me. And your answer was that you may not move life's mountains, but you'll take away the fear that we have. When we look up and we see that huge mountain, we get scared, but you'll take away that fear. Somebody here today needs to know that. Somebody is up against the mountain in their life. And they need to know that God, if they just talk to you for a while, that weeping might endure for a little while, but joy. This week, God, we had to say farewell to a lot of folk. Say farewell to a young man, 25 years old. Yeah, I pray for his family. Give him strength in the name of Jesus. Show us, Lord, that even if you don't move life's mountains, that even if you don't heal our body, even if you don't take bills off the table, that you can still provide. And you can still make a way. Remind us today what our foreparents used to remind us of every Sunday. 
that this joy that you'll give us, the world can't give it to us and the world can't take it away. That you can give us a joy and a strength in the midst of storm. Somebody's going through right now. I lift them up in the name of Jesus. Show them how to seek your Show them how to listen to your response. And Lord, let them feel your presence taking away their fear. Bless us right now. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. Hug somebody, encourage somebody today.